encountering now a 40-day journey starting today. Today we will mark our forehead with the sign of the cross and we hear words from Genesis, the second chapter. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. These ancient words remind us where we are coming from and where we all will return. God made us out of dust, and to dust we shall go back. Ashes remind us who made us and that we are mortal, and we will not live forever. Also ashes remind us that we are in need of repentance. In the book of Jonah, that we will study together during these next six weeks, we will find ashes as a sign of turning our lives around by confessing our sins. Ashes are a plea to God for mercy and compassion, pardon and forgiveness. Ashes acknowledge that we are all in need of forgiveness. We receive the sign of the cross that reminds us about God's great love for us. And it reminds us that we belong to God. In our baptism, each one of us is marked with the cross of Christ forever. With Ash Wednesday, we begin a 40-day spiritual journey toward Easter, a precious time to grow closer in our relationship with God, a time where this outward sign of the cross becomes an inward spiritual strength of who we are and what we do here on earth. Very often in the Bible, when God wanted to prepare someone to find out what her or his mission in life is, God used 40 days. Moses' life was transformed in 40 days on Mount Sinai. The entire city of Nineveh was transformed when God gave the people 40 days to change. Jesus was empowered by 40 days in the wilderness. And the disciples were transformed in 40 days with Jesus after he was resurrected. So let's make count these 40 days that are in front of us as we study together the book of the prophet Jonah. Jonah is the main character in the book we are going to study. The word Jonah actually means dove. Jonah lived in the town Geth Pepher near Nazareth, in the northern part of Israel. He lived in the middle of the 8th century before Christ. It was a time during the reign of King Jeroboam who was able to restore the northern borders to Assyrian. There was a time when Assyrian took over and controlled most of Israel. Damascus, the capital of Assyria, lost power and influence, and Israel was able to rebuild its nation. Now during this time, God sent his prophet, Jonah, to a mission, the mission to go to Nineveh, which was seen at the time as one of the largest city in the world. In this city, they lived 120,000 people. Now, Nineveh was the capital of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Jonah, in a short book, in a collection that is called Minor Prophets, it's a total of 12 prophets, because they have a brief message, we will learn about what Jonah's mission is all about. How God is sending Jonah to go to this place. Christopher Wright, a commentator, says, Mission arises from the heart of God himself and is communicated from his heart to ours. Mission is a global outreach of the global people of a global God. The entire book is about God's pursuit of Jonah. Now, each chapter that we are going to read, four chapters, each chapter is about God's mission. God pursues the heart of the soul of the one God sent. God pursues Jonah from the first word when God calls him and sends him on a mission to Nineveh. It becomes clear Jonah needs pursuing. It turns out Jonah, who had done a lot for God, does not really understand God. We can learn from Jonah that God is not done with us either. God continues to pursue our souls. We are not 
on God's mission, we are God's mission. Let that sink in. We are not on God's mission, we are God's mission. Imagine that you are God's mission in this world, right now, in our time. It's powerful. We also learn how wide God's heart is. God not only pursues Jonah, but also the outsider, and those are far from God. In Jonah's story, God pursues the sailors. We will learn about how they responded. We learn how God pursues an evil king and how he is touched and changed. And we will learn about a warmongering city that has tormented its neighbors, how they are receiving God's mission. In our first chapter that we just heard, we will discuss in our groups. We starting today, we have two groups. We will find out that God speaks directly to us humans. God breathes in us, shares thoughts, motives, and actions with us. Jonah is not going for this mission to go to the evil city of Nineveh. He turns in the opposite direction to Tarshish, the beautiful, flourishing Mediterranean city. Jonah abandoned his God, his home and profession. He decided God's mission wasn't worthy his time. He thinks what God is asking him to do is not what he wants to do because why would he go to a place where people are evil? God should take them off the earth, take them out. But God's plans are different. He doesn't want to take them out. He wants to give them another chance to change. <coughs> and Jonah, who is a righteous Jew, thinks no way I'm going there. I'm going in the other directions. He thinks the city of Nineveh does not deserve him. He took matters in his own hand and gets on a ship to Tarsus instead of traveling up north to Nineveh. When you come together in your groups and talk about what is God's mission and what drives God's mission, start thinking about what is God, what is in God's heart. Why is God sending this man to this town where, is, where there is so much evil? Think about how does God pursue you in your life? The setting of the story of Jonah is also our setting. God has spoken to us through his son. Go, make disciples. God intervenes and pursues you and me to reach out to our borders, to our brothers and sisters, to go far, often to places we don't want to go. When I was a vicar preparing for my final exam, I had to write a curriculum on the Jonah story for elementary school children. And I had to teach a lesson and I was graded by a professor. It was fun to see how the kids got into the role playing of the character of Jonah and how he first ran away from God's mission, but how God did not give up on him and continue to reach out to him to get him on mission. I hope and pray that you can make connections with this Jonah, the sailors, the king, the people of Nineveh, and that you participate in one of our many studies. We have a, the studies all available for you on pretty much every day of the week on Sundays, and you can pick a group that would fit you. May this Lenten journey for all of us will help us to, cl uh, to uh, c draw closer to God and to hear God and figure out what is our mission in our life. Where does God want us to go? And how do we overcome our resistance? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we receive today in a few moments the cross, in form of ashes on our foreheads. Help all of us to hear your mission for our lives. May this Lenten season bring us closer to you and to our neighbors who don't know you yet. I pray that each person here today will engage in this Jonah story and will hear and feel God's pursuit in her or his life. All this 
We pray in the name of Jesus, whose cross we are marked for 